my name is Lars Bishop and I'm a developer technologies engineer here at NVIDIA. I've spent the last 10 years supporting handheld, mobile, and embedded app developers on a wide range of platforms. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing how to take an app that is already running on Android TV through ADB sideloading and preparing it for publication on the Android TV Play Store. Before we continue with the details, we should note that all of the examples in this session and all of the other videos in this series were developed and captured on NVIDIA's Shield Android TV. Not only is Shield the premier Android TV user experience, it is also the premier development experience. Shield includes a built-in micro SD card slot for expandable storage, dedicated USB debugging and power connectors, dual high-speed USB accessory and storage connections, and both Wi-Fi and gigabit Ethernet. In addition, the Shield controller and Shield remote are great for testing multiple Android TV input devices. Paired with NVIDIA's developer tools and our Develop for Shield developer site, Shield provides an unparalleled Android TV development experience. In our previous video, we explained the basics of upgrading an existing handheld application on Android to work on Android TV. This video covers the steps required to make your application appear in the Android TV launcher and appear in the Android TV Play Store. Most of what we will discuss will be applicable to apps and games, but we're going to focus on the needs of non-gaming apps in this series. Our previous video focused on code and layouts to make your app run well on Android TV. This session will focus more on the all-important Android Manifest XML file that declares information to the Play Store about your application. Getting the manifest wrong can lead to your application being needlessly limited from running on key devices in the market, or worse, being rejected on Android TV entirely. The first manifest and build setting to change is the API level that your app targets. This is the target SDK version, and it will affect the way that your application's Java is compiled. It will not, however, affect your app's min spec. You can target a higher API level than your minimum API level. You just have to take care in your Java code to test the SDK level of the device you're running on before making any calls that are available in your target API, but not in your min API. A lower min spec means you can target a wider range of older mobile devices. But for Android TV platforms, this does not yet make a big difference. Android TV requires that you target API level 21 or newer in your manifest and Gradle build file. These settings can be found in the manifest for ant builds or in the Gradle build file for the app itself for the Gradle builds. Once you have set that target, you'll want to rebuild and make sure that there are no unforeseen issues with the app. The next key bits are required in order for your app to show up on the home page of the Leanback launcher. Most apps choose to make this change very early in development because it makes the app much easier to launch on Android TV. The main modification required is to ensure that some activity in your app handles the Lean Back Launcher intent. This can be done in one of two ways, either by adding an intent filter to handle that intent in an existing activity, likely the same one that handles the tablet and phone launcher intent you already have, or by creating a new TV-specific activity that handles the Lean Back Launcher intent only. While more work, the approach of having a separate activity for Android TV does make it much easier to customize the experience. The path taken is up to each app, but some activity has to handle the Lean Back Launcher intent. You will also need to declare that you optionally support Lean Back by adding the Uses Feature tag for it, shown here. Finally, 
you need a banner. This consists of two parts. A drawable resource that is a 320 by 180 pixel image and a tag in the manifest referencing the image in the application section's header as shown. This banner is what will show up as your app's icon in the Android TV launcher. Note that this must be an image, so if you choose to put text in the banner, you may need to consider localizing the banner image text itself. At this point, if you rebuild and reinstall your application, it should appear right on the home screen for easy launching, but you still aren't quite ready to publish as there's more work to do in the manifest to tell the Play Store what your application does and does not need. As we've seen, manifest declarations are key to making your app appear on the home screen, but there are less visible items in your manifest that are just as important when publishing your app. Getting these wrong can lead to your app not being available. If you followed our previous video on preparing your app for Android TV, then you've already ensured that your app is fully usable without a touchscreen. Since mobile devices came first and always had touchscreens, Android assumes that your app requires a touchscreen by default. And since Android TV systems do not have one, you'll need to add a tag indicating that your app doesn't need a touchscreen. The tag to declare touch screens is optional is shown here. If you need a full game pad and not just a minimal D-pad remote, you'll need to indicate that with a game pad feature tag. However, our recommendation for non-gaming apps is not to require a game pad. Make sure that your app is usable with just D-pad, enter, and back. Even gamers will likely want to use their smaller remotes for non-gaming interaction sometimes. Having said that, do test a gamepad with your app, even if you do not require it. Make sure that all of the buttons do something reasonable, even if that's nothing at all. And consider supporting the extra buttons as a form of hotkeys or shortcuts. Just because you don't require a gamepad doesn't mean you can't take advantage of one. Users will appreciate that. You should also make sure that all of the activities that you will need on Android TV declare support for landscape. They can also declare portrait support since you may choose to use a single APK for Android TV and mobile, but they must not declare that portrait is the only supported orientation. Now, if the activity will never be created on TV, then it does not need to support landscape. Some feature tags imply the existence of hardware that Android TV devices don't have. For example, declaring the feature Find Location as required implies that the system has to have a GPS radio. Android TV systems will not have one and you'll be filtered out. So be sure to remove feature tags for things that you do not use and make features like this optional, both in your manifest and in your code. Features that are commonly declared as required on mobile that will cause trouble on Android TV include location, camera, smile, telephony, hello, and accelerometer. These should be optional in both your manifest and code. The last critical step is the easiest. Check the Android TV box on the Android Publisher dashboard before submitting your application. This causes your app to be routed to Google's approval team for review. Unlike the Mobile Play Store, this will not automatically publish your app to the Android TV Play Store. The approvals team at Google We'll test it first. Now, submitting the app to the approvals team is not a guarantee of approval. There's no rubber stamp here. Google's TV app quality page on the Android developer site lists the various criteria for approval and reasons for rejection. Be ready to fix issues and resubmit as needed. The list of things to check for isn't too long, so as long as you hit the basics we discuss here and in the previous session, 
you should be fine. Your app is now ready to submit to the Play Store Publishing Dashboard for review and approval on Android TV. Next stop, profit. But there's much more you can do to make your app stand out. The rest of the videos in this series on Android TV app development will look in more detail at how you can make the app really shine with deep integration into the features of Android TV. This includes going beyond the window of your app itself and onto the launcher's home screen, enticing users to come back to your app for new content, and making it easy for them to find what they are looking for in your app. Thanks for watching. You can click the link on this page to head on over to our Shield Android TV app developer channel for more developer videos.